Hi everybody, tonight we are going to cover Module 40, Economic Growth and Macroeconomic Models. The four major ideas of the module here on this screen, what I'd ask is you take a quick look at them, you can pause the video if you'd like, read through them, and then come on back and we will go through the production possibilities curve, and we also go through the long run aggregate supply curve to make sure that we understand both of those ideas. Okay, as a reminder, this is taking us back to boy, all the way back to Module 1 when we started in micro back in the fall. This is the production possibilities curve. What we've done here is jumped from short run to long run, so you can see how we are growing. First of all, you notice that you have a light-colored inside production possibilities curve, I'll say, which they call original, and then you have the new production possibilities curve. The important thing to remember is that long run growth results in an outward shift of the production possibilities curve. You can see here going from point A to point E. Remember that that outward shift can and often does result in more production of both products or increased total output. Very important for us to remember. A couple of other things to discuss on the production possibilities curve. The first is this idea of a trade-off between investment and consumer goods. So if you look up on the left, you see investment goods. That's the that's the y-axis, and on the x-axis is quantity of consumer goods. Now, why is this important? Well, it's because in the course of making trade-offs in the economy, we as a society and also the government makes decisions between investing in long-term growth and investing in current consumption. So let's take a couple of points on the curve. If we go to point D, which is down on the bottom right, that is a huge emphasis on consumer goods. Now, that makes consumers better off in the short run, but it doesn't include investment in physical capital, so things like buildings and machines used to produce other goods. What happens also if we're at point D with very little investment in uh, those buildings and machines and other things necessary to produce stuff, as our physical capital depreciates, so the stuff that we are using to produce all these consumer goods, as this physical capital depreciates, we're not replacing that. And in the long run, that can hurt us because we're not sustaining our ability to produce. On the flip side, if instead we're at point A on this graph, which is at investing and making a huge emphasis in, in investment goods, that will cause the production possibilities curve to shift outward in the future. But what it does is decrease the quantity of consumer goods in the short run. So that in, a, in opposition to or, opposed, or uh, juxtaposed with investing in D exclusively in consumer goods, which is good for us in the short run because we get stuff, investment in point A is going to be all about investing in the future. Now, generally what happens in any economy is you'll see investment somewhere near point B or C. And what you're doing is combining your investment in long-run productive capabilities you're combining that with production of uh, consumer goods. Now, remember, again, sort of summarizing bottom of the screen, since long-run growth depends almost entirely on rising productivity, and remember that is output per worker, the decisions we make regarding physical capital, human capital, and technology um, ultimately impacts the quality and the sustainability of our long-run economic growth. Okay, let's shift over now to long-run economic growth in the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. Again, as a, as a review here on this slide, the long-run aggregate supply curve shows the relationship between aggregate price level on the y-axis and the quantity of aggregate output supplied when all prices, including nominal wages, and that's the important one, including nominal wages, are flexible. What that does is allow for changes in the aggregate price level, so going P1 to P2 on the y-axis there. It allows, it allows uh, for the quantity of aggregate output supplied to remain unchanged because, again, nominal wages are flexible in the long run. Now, also remember it's vertical at the potential output, so Y sub P, because the long run, a change in the aggregate price level has no effect on the quantity of aggregate supply. Let's look at it now in, in, in terms of just reminder and what moves that long run aggregate supply curve out. We know that over time increases in productivity, so again output per worker, increases in pro productivity are far and away the largest driver toward 
increases in overall potential output for the economy. Things like increases in the quantity of resources, absolutely, those are also potential. Remember, as we're growing GDP, the quality of resources also matters. So the increase in quality of resources and then technological progress, obviously, also contribute to growth over time in potential output. Let's do one quick reminder of long run versus short run growth, or rather said another way, long run growth and short run fluctuations when we're looking at the aggregate demand and aggregate supply models. The top two, the top two graphs here show short run fluctuations. So remember that if we get short run fluctuations either in supply, short run aggregate supply or in aggregate demand, and this one happens to show just rise and fall in nominal wages, the it's that rise or fall in nominal wages that corrects for temporary recessionary or inflationary gaps, output gaps, so to the left or to the right of, of potential output. That rise in nominal wages or the fall in nominal wages are what bring the, the economy back to that equilibrium in the long run aggregate supply and potential output. Long run growth, if you look at the bottom graph, that corresponds to an increase in the economy's potential level of output and that is driven by increases in productivity over time versus recessionary or expansionary gaps that you would see similar to those shown in the graph above there, going out to Y1 to the right or Y1 to the left. Okay, so back to our summary slide. First, long-run economic growth is a sustained rise in the quantity of goods and services. Again, emphasis there on sustained rise as opposed to the short run-ups and downs, short run-ups and downs of the business cycle. Second, long-run growth depends almost entirely on rising productivity, which is output per worker. Third, nations that invest in more physical capital, human capital, or technological R&D see the production possibilities curve shift outward faster than a nation that invests primarily in consumer goods. And a nation that invests exclusively in consumer goods, chances are they will not see an outward shift of the production possibilities curve. Last, short-run economic fluctuations in the business cycle are seen as movements from within the PPC or as shifts in either the aggregate demand or short-run aggregate supply curves. Long-run growth is seen as either an outward shift to the nation's production possibilities curve or an outward shift in the long-run aggregate supply curve. That's it for tonight. Have a great evening, and I will see you in class on Monday.